are here with the True American Rick Hobson, Jericho Nursery. Thank you, and sir. so you are going to help us. We're going to be talking about a variety of things today. But first up, let's say we got a party going on, Memorial Day party, or even just a party coming yeah. up. We need to do a last-minute uh, facelift. Yeah, exactly. As yeah. it were, on our patio. Where should we start? You know, you've got a lot of things to do, but it's Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. We're open till 3 o'clock. You're not going to have time to go plant a little color bowl like we talked about last yeah. time, right? The fillers, the spillers, the thrillers. Uh -uh. You're going to come in and buy this new crazy cross between, and I hope I, 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 hope I don't have to pull out my phone, Digitalis <laughs> and Isioplex. Which is that sounds good to me. Digiplex. <laughs> so, there you go. Okay. That, that's what this thing is. So, or that Canna, mm -hmm. or this Black Eyed Susan, or this Hosta. Well, you just, and I've got those other ones where mm -hmm. it's just a color bowl. I was asked to talk about patio plants, so I just brought some real easy, just buy it, plop it down next to the grill, mm -hmm. done. Now, is this something, if somebody is not really the gardener, is this also something that you can do to kind of break you into it? It's a, Brittany, that's a real good way to go yeah instead of having to try and what goes with what if you just came in and said i just want one or two plants i can try because yeah. you've said i'm not the green thumb i don't yeah. so you buy that little daisy right there that little uriops uh -huh. and you stick it on the porch and you water it and you fertilize it and it blooms all summer okay pretty That's easy. Great. easy enough yeah now are, th are these all are they all going to stay in the plant uh, in the pots at some point will these transplant into the ground if we wanted to move these or are these going to stay in the plants throughout their life you know, most of these can stay in pots through most of their lives. Uh, a lot of them won't come back unless you bring them in. I brought this hosta, this big leaf thing, and I brought big leaves that are colorful in textures so you m don't just have to have flowers like the daisy. Right. This thing looks cool just like that. Yeah, it absolutely. It's a little flower. It's not very significant. Mm -hmm. I have one of those in a pot. The pot's four foot high. It's aluminum. It's got a blue flare to the leaf. And it comes oh, wow. back every year. No wow. kidding. And it shocks me because I'm like, this cool aluminum pot and these blue leaves coming back. Mm -hmm. Most of the stuff's not going to come back in a pot. And I'm a real skeptic about stuff in pots. So either you know it's disposable or you get a few. I have Japanese maples in pots, too, and they come back every year. Okay. So lots now, of options. Uh, oh, we have been seeing so much rain. So how do we combat the rain when we're trying to get our garden started? You channel it. You use it. Okay. You know, a rain barrel off here to the left. We were, we right here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We were talking about that before we started the program. And an inch of rain on a thousand square foot, if you could collect and put that inch of rain to one spot, one spout, mm -hmm. is 600 gallons of water. That is wow. amazing. Yeah, so I was talking to Chad. My house is about 3,000 square feet. I got four tenths. We'll call it half an inch of rain. That's 1,800 gallons of water. Last night. Yeah. Wow. Now, what are, what are the benefits? Uh, reuse of the water. Okay. You know, it's conscientious. Albuquerque is society Albuquerqueans. Is that the right word? Sure. sure. Perquenos, <laughs> Albuquerqueans. You take your pick. 505. 505ers, sure. <laughs> uh, we are very environmentally conscious. We have 30-year lows in water, mm -hmm. and that's good. But we're doing it at the cost of losing trees. Mm -hmm. So take that rain barrel and water a tree. Mm -hmm. Now, can we find these at Jericho? Of course. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So <laughs> you mentioned one thing, and I, I think for me, the real the real challenge is, is figuring out how to channel it yeah. in. Yeah. Now, is, is that something we can come to you and say, Rick, we want to do this. We want to follow in your footsteps, try to you know reduce our carbon footprint. Can you help us figure out how to start channeling that? What, what's the best way for us to do that? So we get the rain barrel, but how do we get that water in the rain barrel? So you've got to have a gutter. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have come to me and said, I stuck it out in the middle of the yard. I'm like, that doesn't work. No, listen, listen. You laugh. That would be this guy. Why doesn't it just all go in there? I don't get it. Hopefully you can get a shot of that spout right behind us. Uh -huh. But you have to have it coming to one spot. Right. That thousand square foot has to be channeled to one gutter. Mm -hmm. Or, like I told you, my one gutter that collects the most water has four of those rain barrels linked together, one on three cinder blocks, one on two, one on one, one on the so ground, trickles down. and I wide the bottoms, and hey, it's just this redneck wow. boat. It's crazy because it's weird and all this <laughs> Hey, stuff, but it works. But it works. It works. And then I went to Harbor Freight and bought a $50 pump. Mm -hmm. I stick it in the fourth barrel from the top. I drop the pump in with the hose hooked to it, and it's like turning on a faucet. Wow. Yeah. So now, I got, what, 320 gallons of water? That's amazing. While yeah, we are talking great. about the rain, yeah. what is this? That's a rain gauge. Yes, but what does it do? 
It gauges rain. It tells you, and the reason I brought this one, you've seen, and I carry the big, easy read rain gauges for old people like myself that okay. can't see, down to the tenth of an inch. And really important here, when I told you I had four tenths of an inch, Okay. Well, if you have that big rain gauge that says one inch, two inch, three inch, five inch, you can't tell. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I should keep a journal, I don't, down to the hundredth of an inch how much rain we get. This wow. will at least tell you down to the tenth. When I say an inch of rain, that's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. Half inch, pretty common. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of go, wow, I should have probably been able to gather 285 gallons or whatever it is. Uh -huh. But I checked my gauges this morning, it was four tenths of an inch. No, it was... Um, Friday morning, four tenths of an yeah. inch. Yeah. So, so when you do this, uh, this is primarily for people. Uh, you say, well, why, why do we need a rain gauge? You mm -hmm. look outside. Yep, yeah, we got some rain. Yeah. Yeah. But this is for <laughs> someone that, if if you are being try, trying to be very conscientious and trying to reuse that water, this is this is just as important as having that that rain you, barrel. Is that know, right? It, no. I, it's, no. It's, it's, yeah. It's just so you know. But it, it's curiosity. I want to know, and I would really like to put weather stations on all my nurseries, sure. and four or five of the houses, so people could say. Because you can be right here at the studio mm -hmm. and not get an inch, not right. get a half inch, not get a tenth of an inch, and live up in the Northeast Heights and have a deluge where you had an inch and a half of rain. Right. Yeah, so when they say, oh, we got three quarters of an inch, that was the airport. Yeah. It changes what did you get all at over. Home? Yeah, exactly. and you could be a block away, two blocks away, and it's different. Yeah, so it's true. curiosity. It's now, fun to keep track. Before we get out, can you give us three tips for planting in the summer? Yes. Top three. Top three. Use good soil. Don't buy junk. Okay. Uh, pick appropriate plants for appropriate places. Mm -hmm. Water, 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 water. Now the water, best, water. of course, water restrictions happen here in, in New Mexico throughout the summer, even though we've been getting so much rain. Correct. Still anticipate those water restrictions happening. So you recommend early in the morning, late in the afternoon. Is there a better, is there a better time to do it? We want to avoid the evaporation of that yeah. water. Correct. What do you do, Rick? I water in the morning. In the morning. Now, I, wa I water in the morning because I'm up in the morning. I can see, mm -hmm. I think all the parks and golf courses water at night. Okay. But just, you know, the one, two, three, two, one, mm -hmm. it's accurate. It's accurate. It is. Albuquerque's done a good job. One, two, three, two, one. Uh, in June, it'll go to three times a week. In May, it's twice a week. And if you're watering enough water, the one, two, three, two, one is the schedule. That's okay. fine. It's ample. Good to but know. But it's knowing how much water is coming out, how long it takes to fill up the pot, what size the dripper is. Good to know. All right, so just very quickly, two locations. Jericho Nursery said you're open till 3 today. Is that open right? Until 3 today. We're at 101 Alameda. That's east to second, right on the railroad tracks. And our new location on the freeway in Osuna. I'm calling it the Jericho on Osuna. San Mateo turns into Osuna at the freeway. All I'm right. right back there off the road on the north side. Fantastic, Thanks. Rick. Thanks so much.